Whether you are a prospective student, a parent or simply curious to know about National Law University Delhi experience, watch out this video to discover the various facets of life at one of India's premier law school. For me, I've completed uh, my five years at the university and uh, they've been wonderful five years, I would say. And I remember the time when I was preparing for the for the A-Lit and CLAD. And as I graduate, um, we'll, have, we'll be having our graduation ceremony towards in August, I think. So as I graduate, I think uh, this half a decade long experience has certainly been one of the most enriching experiences, both in terms of how professionally or personally the college has molded us and uh, be it in terms of uh, legal education or generally in terms of soft skills, I think the number of avenues that the college has provided us has really helped us become a good or at least aspire to become a really good legal professional. So, I, and the five years, I think the kind of training that the college gives is certainly one thing that is sought after and is something that it depends on you how much you make use of it. And if you do properly, I can guarantee that how you step in the college and how you get out of it, you'll see two, two different versions of yourself in generally in terms of how you carry yourself. Professionally, in terms of um, how our education is, the kind of extracurricular activities that I have done, at least there are few skills that you, that you thoroughly learn throughout these five years. And to name a few, these would be, one is reading. And by reading, I do not mean reading fictional material. It's non-fiction that is mostly given to you so you are able to understand how to read complex legal language and how to decipher it how to go about it how to interpret it analyze it so one skill that you certainly develop is reading another skill you by virtue of it being a law course you also learn how to write and in normally in legal language you call it drafting so you also get a good hang of how uh, a writing skill has to be developed and you do that over five years through uh, write through writing for organizations, publishing pieces, or even by virtue of uh, writing school, uh, writing college projects, research projects. So the different ways in which you develop that skill. And besides that, I think the one of one other another skill that you thoroughly learn is that of researching. Researching. So in law, as we know, there's uh, for almost every legal point, there's some gray area. There's a penumbra that exists. So. As a student, what you're expected to do is give your inputs on how that grey area has to be considered, your opinions and everything. So for that, research is an indispensable skill you need from, from on, like now we have all the online resources available, but still from online culling out the most relevant information and knowing why it is relevant for the legal point that you are reading on or, or researching and ultimately putting it in a way that any, any person who may not be well versed with the topic is able to understand that's another, another skill that you learn. So I think pretty much research, reading and writing. And besides normal subject level education, you have other activities such as uh, such as mooting, such as ABR, such as also uh, being an editor at a, at a journal. So there are different ways in which you can uh, develop these skills. It's not, de develop these skills, it's not necessary that you are institutionally, you're required to do certain things for you to develop. So there, there are a lot of opportunities outside your books uh, to learn these skills. And besides these hardcore skills, I think even soft skills in terms of how you communicate to anybody in the, the kind of setup that you're in. Because in for, to be a lawyer, especially to be a litigator, articulation skills is something which is key. And irrespective of how you come to the college, the kind of articulation skills you have then, at least college ensures that if you seriously participate in the activities that go around in colleges, if you seriously consider them, by the end of fifth year, you will realize that your articulation skills, both oral articulation skills or written articulation skills, have significantly developed. So that's something that I think professionally, at least, uh, was something that I really worked on. And I think the college gave us a really good environment to develop all of this. Like the name of the course is BLLV, so it's a mix of arts and law, but predominantly it's law. So as of now, how the course goes is that you have five years and in the first two years, besides law subjects, you also have some art subject such as political science and uh, English is also there. So and even so, some art subjects have some legal element to it. So from that perspective, it is starts. So for instance, we have law and economics. 
so economics is taught from a legal perspective and uh, so in the first two years we will have a mix of legal and non legal subjects and after the second year from third year fourth year fifth year it will be solely law subjects so you have the core subjects of the evidence law constitution law corporate law and in fourth and fifth year you also have electives or seminar co- courses as we refer to it and these are these pertain to very niche area of areas such as competition law insolvency law so i mean how it starts is it starts with a mix of arts and law and then core law and then niche areas of law so that's how the progression is in terms of simple to advanced but having said that it's certainly subject to certain amendments in future so but broadly this is how it goes it's simply as it is, it is with other exams it is just uh, you have to clear your 12th examinations and uh, besides that i think exam now happens in december when i was giving it it used to happen in i think may ha uh, yeah may was the month when it used to happen so there's a slight change in that respect but i think that's the only criteria you just have to clear 12 besides this there's no hard and fast rule as i remember my time initially when you come in the first semester so you take some time to adjust to everything and the art is that once you've understood how things work so it might require you a semester or two after that slowly and steadily you know how to manage and balance things so certainly by the time you enter your fourth year or fifth year you know how to balance your social life how to enjoy your time with your friends how to also study and how to also balance your curricular activities so in terms of balancing again once you once you have once one semester or two semesters have passed by then you've realized how to go about it initially i agree that it is a little difficult in terms of uh, generally understanding how to go about how much time to how much time one should invest in studies and how much time one should invest in other things the, the the balance that you want is a little difficult to get but once you understand the process it's all nobody can tell you you have to go go this way there's no set package there's no one answer that fits all you decide for yourself how you work and ultimately i mean as a simple answer to your question it certainly is manageable a lot of people manage, manage it and it totally depends on how you are taking your studies how you are taking your yourself how seriously you take yourself and you can do all of them very seriously you can manage all the time it's completely manageable is what i would say initially you might be intimidated a little but that will go away in a few weeks or in a semester is what my response to the question would be first day as as i remember i mean so i i had never gone to a hostel so i think the first uh, shocking experience was to go from home to hostel so the kind of kind of uh, change that you undergo is very very significant so you have to adjust to the hostel but i i remember the classes were certainly very mesmerizing in the initial few days especially once with good professors they were very very thought provoking and some so not not every teacher is good but the ones the professors that who are really good make sure that the amount of time you spend in the class one hour or two hour whatever it is is worthwhile so I remember the first few days i was really impressed with a few professors and i really wanted to learn and at the same time i was trying to adjust to the hostel life but given that at least our batch size was 80 85 so also we made sure that we were interacting with a lot of people initially because those were the first few days so you wanted to interact as well and there was no initial there was no huge initial pressure of studying so you had the time as well to absorb everything so i think in the first few days i was just doing that absorbing everything and trying to find my place there be the batch is formed of first generation lawyers so uh, i mean just like any other person you are treated and the amount of opportunities you get get and the quality of opportunities is equal for everybody so everybody who wants to pursue can pursue it and if you seriously want to become a good legal professional there is no barrier as such in terms of having any parent of yours as a lawyer or having a background of uh, people of family with lawyers you can simply get in and everything is managed very fairly there is no bias it's a transparent mechanism whatever you want to pursue howsoever howsoever you want to pursue is totally dependent on you and nlu delhi does not require any uh, prior legal understanding for you to sit in the classes and you are there to understand law so that's the idea so i mean how a newbie is trained in law is similar to anybody even with a legal background so there's no difference as such in terms of support when you enter law school in first year that's the time when you most require it 
and in the first year we had a lot of teachers who were really helpful not only within the class setup but even outside it so you would not only re- require to correspond to them in respect to your academics or research projects but even if you had you had any kind of doubts you had any kind of hesitation you could directly reach out to them and they were very very accessible and even in a situation where they they were not accessible a lot of them had teaching assistants so teaching assistants are mostly from the senior years which is fourth year fifth year and who have undergone the process who have faced what you are facing today so i remember when i had certain doubts when i had certain concerns i would just if the teacher was not very accessible i would just go to the teaching assistant and they would let me know and this could this was not just limited to chat or you know calling you could just in person visit them and discuss your problems and a lot of faculty also is so good where you can just simply walk into their office and discuss your concerns so they don't would not even expect you to previously email like email them in uh, some sometime before and then book an appointment you can just simply go and talk to them so there are a lot of accessible teachers very good teaching assistants besides that even seniors that you have very very accessible one message away so so i never had an issue at least in my initial years of law school for any questions that i have be it within the classroom or outside the classroom and there was good support from the faculty and even otherwise clubs but we have committees we have some societies and i think like any university there's everything you have you have cultural committee you have a debating committee you have adr committee and you have social uh, student welfare committee uh, hospital welfare committee library committee so all kinds of committees are there and how it happens is that the activities that you would want in college so for instance we want any cultural events you want diwali night dandiya night you want a christmas ball you want the annual fest so it all happens through the committee and i think per semester we have two or three events happening and uh, i think it's great great community time that all of us have we thoroughly enjoy it and for people let's say who are interested in debating you have practice sessions being organized by the committee you have the annual debating competition that happens um then besides that for people who want to pursue other things like editorial positions you have uh different research centers that provide those positions uh student flagship journal as well so that is also there and in terms of social life i think outside the class since the since the college is so compact in terms of how it's designed on an architect architectural level uh you have a very a very small setup wherein you know uh you have the academic block you have a library nearby you have a girl, you have girls hostel to boys hostel so you don't really it's not really a very big campus so you whenever you walk walk uh, towards let's say you're going to amu or you're going to cafeteria you see many people and it's a good time to say hi to your batchmates to seniors to juniors and most often when you're like whenever you at least for me when if i was going to the library or i was going to the academic block uh, there was rarely an occasion where i would not find anybody and i had to say hi and had a good conversation with the person so the good time as long as you enjoy the process thoroughly you will not feel there is any huge deficiency of anything and even if there is a lack or deficiency i think as students since most of the things in college are student run it is our responsibility to you know bring a culture that we ourselves want and we aspire to have so i think that's how i would pretty much talk, like discuss that, that that's my input on uh, the clubs and social life and everything don't forget to like share and subscribe to our youtube channel